All right, so in uh, continuing with our logo design, remember that we are doing assignment six, and if we go to assignment sheets in our Canvas page, you'll see that under the assignment six assignment sheet, we have this link to logo uh, design and creation basics. And we talked about the different types of logos, right? Logo types versus pictorial logos versus combined logos. Um, logo types are also called word marks because they rely primarily on text. We'll be designing text later. So I'm asking you to focus primarily on a pictorial logo for this assignment so we can learn to use Illustrator. And so for pictorial logos, there are three helpful basic design approaches. And really this isn't that different when you start using word marks as well. Central symmetrical, dynamic, and a play with positive and negative space, right? So we went through some of the tips in Illustrator using the pen tool. Uh, this was very helpful, just sticking with the pen tool as your main tool. And all of these uh, tips work in Photoshop, Illustrator, and InDesign, which is a layout program, very common in uh, Adobe. And now we're gonna get to some more particular ones, right? Uh, with the caps lock pressed, you can have additional functionality to your pen tool. And then when it comes to changing directions, right, this is kind of a, a guide to help you understand how to click and drag in order to create curves and how you can control that. You can also hold down shift while you're click, creating curves to get perfect um, right at, or uh, 45 degree angle bezier handles, which gives you very accurate curves. There are other kind of special effect options that we might look at. The width tool, which if you're doing strokes, uh, can extend your strokes in a more interesting way, kind of make them more gestural. We can do, we can actually build in retro effects as fills over the top. We can do kind of a scribble design after the fact. And there's even, we can create our own symbols so we can use them over and over again. And you can download your own kind of vector symbols into Illustrator. Now, in terms of using Illustrator itself, this is what I wanna be able to show you today. There are other tools besides the pin tool, which are very helpful. One is the blob brush, which I just adore. And we'll be getting into that a lot with our next assignment, assignment seven, and doing line art and digital inking. There's also the pencil tool, and the pencil tool along with the smooth tool can really create the right image. And then of course, there are these new file formats that we're learning, AI for Adobe Illustrator file and EPS, which is how we're gonna save our final work and transport it. So you know how to get to all these. So now we're back in Illustrator and using the pen tool. And I was showing you how you can cut shapes out of other shapes. So. I've made these different layers just to help organize. So let me just turn these layers off now. And let me show you what we actually have. So what I created, I am going to now duplicate to show you. So I'm gonna click that whole layer, hold down command and click this whole layer so that everything's selected. Then I'm going to hit Command C. And I'm gonna turn off those two layers, lock them, put a new layer on top, and then say Edit Paste in Place. I do this a lot in Illustrator. So now I have all those layers combined into this one layer. I'm gonna move it over to the gray background instead of the white artboard. And it shows you that I have white shapes and black shapes. Now that might make sense for a black and white logo, but we don't want a black and white logo. We want a black shape logo. We want a single color logo. So the next task is how do I cut these white shapes, which are here and here, how do I cut them out of the black shape? And I use the Pathfinder tool, the same way I use to combine different paths together, I can use to exclude paths from each other. So this is how I do it. I select all of them in that layer, and then I simply hit exclude. And it cuts it out. It's gonna make it whatever fill color is on the top. So then I just change that fill color, because I'm going for black, to black. Okay, 
Then I'm going to use a guide and I'm going to stick it right to the middle. Right. Then I'm going to select all of it and copy it, Command C. And then I'm going to lock this, turn it off, make a new layer, and then paste in place again. So paste in place is a wonderful way. It's, it's like duplicating in Illustrator. Then I can do that one more time. Edit, paste in place. So now in this pink layer, I have two copies of this cutout. Think of it like paper. And now I just have to unfold it so that it's symmetrical. Lost my guide. Let me put my guide back in because that was on another layer. Let me put the guide in. Okay, so now what I do is I take one of those, I select it, and then I say object transform reflect across a vertical axis at 90 degrees. Okay, and then I'm going to hold down shift as I move it so it doesn't wander, and I'm going to lock it in place. Okay, I can turn off the guide on and off with command semicolon and it shows me there's that I got it perfectly seamed together right there's no line going down the middle so now what do I need to do I need to select them all boom and then I need to use Pathfinder to unite them so now it is one cutout shape with holes in it and that is our finished simple black logo perfectly symmetrical perfectly clean. There it is. And then if I wanted to do more variations on that, what do I do? I select it, I copy it, Command C, I lock it, turn it off, make a new layer, say edit, paste in place. It's almost like animation, right? All these duplicates. And then I can try different variations, such as just squeezing it a little bit, making it a little bit shorter, right? Maybe I like that better. I do like that a little bit better doesn't matter what size it is. Right? So that versus that. What do you guys think? Which one feels more logo-ish? The one on the left? Just its proportions are just a little bit cleaner, right? So once everything's combined, you can just play with, with the scale, kind of tighten it up. You can go a little bit more maybe. Yeah, I think this. Okay, so I have one logo solution. Now, how do I save that logo solution? It doesn't matter what size it is, as long as it's Illustrator. I save it by going to File, Save As. I turn off everything else. I want to make sure, actually, often I'll put it over on the gray like this. So I want to make sure there's no white shapes or anything else in there. Everything else is turned off right in my layers and I say file just save to keep it as my illustrator file this is my work process so far but then I'm going to say because I've finalized a black logo now file save as an EPS I'm going to save this onto the desktop and I'm going to call this Carl assignment 6 forking bowl logo design and I'm just going to call it one this is my first one. So I'm going to show you a different one now. This one was central and symmetrical, and it plays with positive and negative space. And it's, um, yeah, it's just pretty straightforward. And it used all pin tool. The next one, I'm going to use some different tools. So this next one is also a bunch of black, black cutout shapes. But none of them are symmetrical, right, or even. And so if I use the pen tool, as I've been doing, I can, let's see, I need to create a new layer that's unlocked. Okay. I can click at a point. I can get to the next point and drag it out. And to the next point.
and to the next point. All right, and then to actually make it fit, I can hold down Command to get to the Bezier handle, and I can treat each handle differently, and I can get this curve to be closer to what I want. Don't love the yellow handles, they're a little hard to see. Something like that. That's pretty close. So that's all with the pen tool. If I hold down command on the pen tool and click out, I can get to the next shape and I can just keep doing that. Give myself these little curves. To big curves outline these shapes. And then holding down command and moving these handles to where I want them. By clicking on the anchor and then adjusting each one. And every once in a while, just moving them slightly. Okay. Then this horn, so all pin tool. Get the curve. Illustrator is good at doing things in as few steps as possible. It doesn't mean you won't have to adjust it later. But let's see if I can just do this with three anchors. Oh, that's a big curve. And then hold down Command and adjust the appropriate curves. Hold down command and adjust the appropriate anchors and the appropriate curves. Or handles to create the curves. What's funny is when you sketch something in pencil, there's a lot of subjectivity to how th what side of that pencil line you actually want to make your shape. And so Illustrator allows you to be incredibly exact. So it's all about kind of refining what you decided. All right. Then I might go back to this and I might decide, okay, I want this one to be a little bit closer in. And I want this curve to be a little bit stronger. And I want this inside curve to be a little bit bolder. And I want this anchor to be a little bit higher. And so just black cutout shapes, but you can really refine them. And if I turn off my sketch, I can see how those look together. And yeah, those look okay so far. I still feel like I can move this whole thing in a little bit. But before I try to perfect it, it's good to, to get the rest of the shapes. Okay, so that's with the pen tool. Now you can see how that's all very doable, but I'm gonna show you another tool, which is, which is my favorite tool in Illustrator. 
And this is where you can just freehand shapes. So this is where I use a tablet 